Steve Bowers welcoming you to E Plus TV 6 and a forum on education featuring the candidates for District 5, Position 1. This is a presentation of the Chamber here in Jackson in cooperation with E Plus TV 6. We appreciate the Chamber facilitating the organization of these discussions, your participation in that, and the involvement of, of, of E Plus TV 6. Our two candidates in District 5, Position 1 are Sherry Franks and Dr. Tamika Noel. This is an open seat that has been represented by Jim Campbell, who is not seeking re election this year. And ladies, good to have you, you both with us. One thing I want to, to try to do when we start out is, is ask both of you how you describe the district because people that are familiar with politics may know the districts very, very well. My impression is that sometimes people don't know if you're in District 5, District 6, District 2, or whatever. So Sherry, when you're, when you're campaigning and talking to people, how do you describe District 5? Well, it runs all the way up to Ashport. It runs to the county line going west. It runs to Pleasant Plains running east. Okay. And then it goes south all the way down um, to Lambeth. There's oh, a strip wow. of it down um, Lambeth Drive. And, and it's kind of an odd district there because it butts up to um, where Carlin and Hamilton and that group are running on one side. And then it bumps up against another one on the other side. It, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. And I see how people get very confused with it because I've had to look it up myself to find out if somebody actually is in our district. Yeah. Sometimes I know when people go to vote, Tamika, that that's when they find out that they're either in the district or not. Yeah. Tamika, how do, you, how do you describe the district when, when you're talking to people? I would describe the district as the northwest corner of Jackson all the way out to the county line, uh, Midtown and the Atlanta uh, neighborhood as well as areas of South Jackson down to the South uh, Fort Deer area. Okay. There is also this small arm that reaches into Northwest Jackson. If you were on uh, North Highland, there's a very small segment there. So it's a very broad district, um, you know, and I understand why everyone is confused. I'm just gets confused. We'll see. County Commission will be drawing new lines after the census. So maybe we can get them to re rearrange things and we'll see. I want to ask you both and start with you, Sherry. Once again, Sherry Franks and Dr. Tamika Noel are with us. They're seeking District 5, Position 1, position on the Board of Education. But Sherry, why are you in this race? Um, I've got three kids in the school system. I've got one at Madison. I've got one I'm homeschooling, and I've got one at Pope. I've been active with the board probably the last two, two and a half years, attending the monthly board meetings, um, different committee meetings. And with Jim not running, I felt it was important to have someone that was involved in the school system to get out there and be a representative of our community. Yeah. Tamika, why are you in this race? I'm in this race because I'm also a mother. Uh, my older kids attend school here in the public school system. And uh, I've been able to see some of the inequity that's present uh, that, that affects my child. Um, and then with my experiences volunteering and observing at Andrew Jackson, I was able to see that the inequities were actually much broader than just my own child. It's actually far, uh, reaches far more uh, students than, than you might think based on your singular uh, experience with your own children. Um, I think that I am in this race as well because um, I have a service, uh, I have you know, the service of others at heart, and I think I have a unique skill set that could be very, very, um, you know, amenable to the school board moving forward. So when you say inequities, then what, what are those? And, and what are you trying to address here? Sure. Uh, on a personal level, you know, I have a daughter who attends Pope as well. She has an individualized education plan due to her ADHD and a behavioral disorder that she has. And uh, despite that, her, uh, her IEP has never been fully accommodated. And there are a lot of uh, students uh, in the school system who have IEPs, a lot of special education students who don't get the attention that they require because of a lot of different reasons. I don't think it's a lack of wanting to help these students. I think it's a lack of resources. Uh, we don't have enough educators in the system. We don't have enough assistance to uh, help those educators. In my opinion, we don't have enough funding for the school system. Those are things that need to change. Um, when I first moved here four years ago, there was this all this talk about you know, the school system in general is not good, but there are pockets or certain schools that are good, okay to send your kids. And I think that we need to change that narrative. 
I think that all schools in this in the public school system need to have the same reputation. They need to offer the same education to everyone. And until that happens, then I don't think any of us should feel uh, satisfied whether our children attend public school or not. Um, our our school system here, you know, it it it. Uh, connects with a lot of different things. You know, a lot of people talk about the commerce and the industry that school systems could bring here if we had a better school system. So, so those inequities, is that a real core of your campaign? You're talking yes. to people? Okay. Yes, yes, there's a lot of inequity in the school system and I would like to see that change. Okay. Sherry, what's the core in your campaign then? I mean, the core of my campaign is the um, disruption that's been going on among the board um, the lack of communication with the board and the superintendent that's occurred for probably the last 15 years, um, re-engaging that, the board acting more of a cohesive group to create um, policies and work with the school systems. I think that's been a breakdown over some time with, with different people among the board. Um, I think that there is some changes that need to go on with how the board interacts with the community, how they talk to the community, how they're engaged with the community, and how they represent themselves in public. What would that be then, Sherry? What would you like to see there? Well, I think that when you work with a team, um, part of being a team is learning how to disagree, to state your opinion, and everyone have a right to an opinion, but working to get a better cohesive answer. Um, working in the business world for 20 years, you work with a lot of different people and you go into different meetings and different things like that. And you learn that everybody has their own personal agenda. But the thing is with the school board, we have to put our agendas aside and, and represent our children and the um, community. And I think that's what the breakdown has been is it's been personal gains and things like that instead of putting the children and putting our community first. And, and that's a problem. Sherry Franks with us and Tamika Noel and they're seeking district by position one on, on the Board of Education. Dr. Noel, one thing that you have called attention to, you got some real reservations about us resuming school and you've made that kind of part of your campaign theme and emphasis out there. What are your concerns? My concerns are that although we've been presented options for resuming school, there, there's not enough meat on those bones, so to speak. If I'm a parent who wants to consider sending my child back for live instruction, I don't think that we've heard enough about what that will look like day to day. What will the screening process be? What will the testing process be if it's needed? If uh, people were to test positive, how would we maintain their confidentiality? How will we feel confident that we have enough personal protective equipment for those people that will require it. What are the logistics of sanitizing the different facilities? I'd like to know much more about what those plans look like um, from a practical standpoint before, as a parent, I can even make an informed decision about what I want for my child. And I just don't think that we've seen and heard enough about that. So if you were, if you were on the board, would you be opposing this, this opening? I would be opposed to this opening in, in terms of live uh, in-person instruction. I think that cases are rising far too sharply, and we have not gotten ahead of this uh, coronavirus yet. And I think that it would be unwise to, to reopen in the traditional sense. I do. Okay. Sherry, and I know this hypothetical, if you're on the board, would, do you have similar concerns or you think we're okay or where are we? I, I I've got my concerns. I think communication has not been good with the school system. And I think some of that is they're trying to learn what they're going to do. But unfortunately, the community is asking for more details. Um, I think they've got three good options if we had all the details. I think we just need to know, you know, how are they going to do the things that Dr. Noel brought up, the sanitizing, the separating the kids, and, and those kind of things. I think the fact that they've got two other options that parents can choose, the um, full year homeschool type virtual program and then the temporary program gives you a lot of flexibility to make a decision if you don't want your kids going. Um, I know I've got a high schooler and um, he's made it quite clear that he is going to school because he has had enough of me and the house. 
So um, he says, I will wear my mask, mom. I have my hand sanitizer. I won't touch anybody. I, I just think that they're trying to figure out what they're doing and they're trying to make a good decision on what they communicate with us. But unfortunately it comes across as they don't have enough information and, and that's a problem. Okay. Let's talk about being elected. Clarify, yeah, I, I'm not talking about the board yeah. and the superintendent. I, I think that we as parents don't have enough information to make informed decisions. Okay. Um, so like I said, if I had more information about what those plans look like, then I could decide what's best for my children. And I have two different learners at home. So yeah. I suspect that option, the, the option for child A might be different from the option for child B. So I, I need to know all of the details before we can move forward. That, that, and she's exactly right on that because I've got two ends of the spectrum and my high schooler will probably go back. But my first grader in the special needs program, which I would love to say he's gonna wear a mask. He's not gonna wear a mask. He's gonna to touch people. He's gonna to hug people. I have concerns about him going back for his safety as well as other people's safety. So, you know, there's, it, it's just hard. You've got so many kids and you gotta make so many decisions. But I think some of it too is communicating a little more with the parents so that we understand what the process is and what it is actually gonna look like. Sure. And I think we can all appreciate that while options are being presented, not every family truly has options. You know, the virtual option, either long term or uh, short term, is really not a viable option for a lot of people, even if we could provide certain resources to them. And uh, that's the that's the complicated part is that, you know, even with options, you may not have an option. Because yeah. there's a lot of parents that can't support their children on their education because either they don't have the time, they're working one or two jobs, they're single parents, um, or they don't have an educational background. There's, there's a lot of different things that fall into that. And for them to have to stay home, that could be a detriment to their education moving forward. So we're having to, I think the school is having to juggle all of that to try to make a good decision that's best for everybody. And I, I don't know if there is a perfect decision. Question is, we just gotta make the best decision with the information that's available. And they've gotta communicate better with us on things that are going on. And I think they're trying to. The change in the superintendent, that made a huge difference. He's stepping into a, a big plate and he's doing a good job at putting the communication out there. But I think we're all just going, we want more. Well, and it's a moving target too. The figures change every day. It's a real challenge. The interaction with the superintendent, have either of you been able to meet him, talk to him? What's what's that? What's your reaction to him? <laughs> I met him briefly at the groundbreaking events a couple of weeks ago at Madison Academic and JCM. Outside of that, I haven't had a lot of time to speak to him. I did attend the last uh school board meeting that we had that was was the the first live one in a while but again they were busy with with board business and I didn't need to talk to him personally I do look forward to going to his uh, meet and greet later on this evening but my my thoughts are that he has come into a uh, less than ideal situation and he seems adequately prepared to deal with the issues that are present and he definitely seems committed to um, trying to turn things around uh, as best as he can. And, um, you know, he's, he's got a great attitude and seems to be an, an optimist. So I definitely have a lot of respect for that. Okay. Jerry. I, I think the, the thing is too, is, is we go forward. Um, the board has to understand that he is a very qualified man and we need to all stand behind him and support him and be his cheerleader because that's going to be the difference in the success of the school in the school system. And we have to make sure that we are supporting him and um, continuing to support him with the public. Yeah. Let's assume that you're elected to, to this position. What, what is your first priority? And Sherry, I'll start with you. What's your first priority when you, when you get on this board? I think the first priority is to understand what all is going on. Um, you've got to always educate yourself. Anytime you go into a new position, understand what the dynamics of what the superintendent is doing, what the school system is doing. There's a lot of things we see from the outside looking in, but there's a lot of things going on on the inside that we don't know about. So I wanna make sure one is to get fully informed of everything that's going on 
and make good, strong communication with everyone on the board um, so that I have a good working relationship. And then moving forward, it's trying to help with that communication that's been a breakdown in the past. What areas are you seeing, so, Sherry, that where you feel like you don't have information or that it is not in real clear? Well, I think as a parent, you get information via Facebook, via the internet, via the TV. But when you're hands on and you're talking to the superintendent, you're talking to the school system, you're talking to the people involved, you're going to get a much better taste of what's going on and a better understanding of what's going on. And, and that's what I wanted to do, first of all. I, I learned when I worked in business, it is a horrible idea the first day to walk in and start telling people what they need to do. You need to figure out exactly what they're doing and understand what they're doing and make sure that you have all the information before you jump into that location. All right, Tamika, you're elected to the Board of Education. What's your priority when you first get in there? I would also try to just assimilate as much as I can into the board, understand um, each of the board members and the superintendent. I'd like to try to get a sense of who they are as people, you know, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses. Um, and I, I don't mean weakness as a, as a negative thing per se, even if it sounded that way, but just things that they, you know, can really add to the conversation and things that maybe another person can add. Um, and like uh, Ms. Frank stated, if you don't understand the context of everything, how can you move forward? So I think we'd all have to do that upon joining the board. But um, I think collectively that we'd have to come up with maybe a few issues that we'd really like to tackle first. And I think it has to be, you know, school reentry first and foremost. Um, and then maybe tackle some of the issues that remain unresolved on the board. You know, what are what are the, the priorities? We have to identify the priorities first and, you know, try to understand which ones we might be able to actually tackle and uh, see see through to the finish. That's that's the sense of that's the sense that I get is that a lot of things have been started and then some things remain unfinished. Okay. And uh, like I said, we have a lot of work to do. Any specifics you want to talk about that you see that are that are concerning to you? Well, um, like I said, my, my primary concern is, is, is a safety issue about reentering schools and how we do that, when we do that, if we do that. Okay. Um, so I think I've got to see more of the plan. I, I hope that's uh, forthcoming very soon because I think we have a lot of parents here who want to make the best decision for their child, but they don't have enough information, and myself included. So um, before we can register our kids, we, yeah. we have to know what's what's going to happen. I think earlier in the year, we thought we'd be past all that by now. And it may be when y'all get there in September, it may be glaring or maybe changing when we get out there. We are in the mid, we've gone through vision 2020 and then we have two school construction projects that are underway. We got a Pope project uh, that is hanging out there. Are we headed, Tamika, are we headed in the right direction there? Are you supportive of that? Or are there concerns, different direction that you'd like to see explored? Well, from what I can understand is that we have a lot of the pieces in place. We have a plot of land up on Ashport that has been uh, acquired by the, the school system. We have a architect uh, on board and we have a construction company on board uh, per the uh, resolution that was just adopted. I think it was on June 11th uh, of this year. So those I think are the biggest pieces, but now we have to have that design and construction company get together uh, to complete their bids. I think after that, we can understand how much this new K through eight Pope, if we're gonna have one is gonna cost. And then it's up to our county commission to, to secure the funds to, to make it happen. But I think the, the, the basis of what we need is there. I'm not sure what's hindering us from moving forward, but um, that, that seems to be the sequence of steps that needs to occur if it's going to occur. I live in that uh, area of town, so it's a nice thought. I don't know what the other alternatives were that might have been considered instead of that, but I think there's a lot of support in this area for a, a K through eight school, considering this is the you know fastest growing area of the city, and uh, there's only one public school here. So um, I think that there's a huge level of support here, and you might even see you know an influx of, of students into the public school system if there was a, another option. Chair, you've been following this, Vision 2020, these construction projects. Are we on the right track here? We made the right moves or 
you like to see something differently have done or do now? I, I think that they are on the right track. Um, when you're talking about Polk, I mean, that has hit lots of hurdles, lots of hurdles along the way. Um, what land to pick? Is this the right land? Is this one too much? Well, all of those things are done. Now it's basically a, do we have the money? And county commission is going to have to decide whether they're going to allocate that money. And I think um, Dr. Noel made a very good point in the fact that this is the largest growing area. There is more um, new homes going up in this area. There are more kids. We're losing kids in this area to the private schools. Um, parents are stretching themselves so thin to put them kid, their kids in private school because they're, they just are, they're scared um, and they don't know what their options are. And with Polk the way it is, it's, it's bound. There's no more growth available. Um, they've got kids in temporary buildings that have been there for 30 plus years. And in my mind, that's not really temporary. Um, and, and the school is, is got some fundamental issues. And the question is, is they can't, they can't extend their campus where they are to be in the same playing ground as many of the other elementary schools. So they're going to have to either decide to use that land or they're going to have to realize that they're going to continue to lose families to private schools and to Medina. And as that occurs, um, there's going to be a lot of other bigger things happen. When kids start moving out and parents start moving out, industry eventually starts moving out because they move where people are. And, and that's a concern to me on a big picture. Is that a settleable position to the other members of, of the Board of Education? Because when you get into, we've talked to people in District 3, they're talking about reopening Melissa's and, 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 and Pope. I mean, they're, they're within the board, there are a lot of different priorities. Well, you look at it, and, and those will be great, but the demographics of this city is not growing in those areas. They have worked on additional schools in the eastern side of the city. Um, Whitehall reopened. It was redone and reopened. Um, and there's some other elementary schools, but the demographics of this city is in this northwest corner, and there's nowhere to put these kids. If you've ever walked through that campus, and seeing um, buckets sitting in the hallway because the ceiling's leaking, or the fact they've had to move a classroom, or they've taken over the library because there's no classroom. They've taken over the, the um, teacher's lounge because there's nothing there. And it's continuing to grow, and people are continuing to have kids in this area, and there's nowhere to put them. Okay. Tamika, is that a sellable position to the other members of the board? I think it's a sellable position. Uh, you know, I think everything that we both stated about this area, the northwest uh, corner of Jackson, is absolutely true. But the 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 flip side to that is that you know most of the children in this area, you know, are not considered to be at risk students. You know, they have resources where they can attend uh, private schools if if that's what their parents choose. Uh, Miss Franks mentioned the the east side of Jackson. You know, in that area, you know, while it may not be growing. Um, there are lots of students there who are at risk and who, uh, you know, have have to have someone advocating for them as well. Yeah. All right. If money was no object, I guess, or, or maybe just whatever the, the key, you know, I, I know you're obviously you're concerned about the school system where you wouldn't be in this race, right? And so to me, if there's one thing you could change, uh, well, let me say, I, I, I've been given the signal, we got about five minutes left. So to me, I want to make sure that you have plenty of opportunity. The key reason that you should be elected this Board of Education, whatever you wish to say in your closing statement. I think the key reason, you know, is that my unique uh, knowledge and skill set uh, is really second to none in terms of being added to this school board. Because we are facing this COVID pandemic, you know, which was not one of my primary reasons when I actually filed my petition, it wasn't this bad. It wasn't really a problem at all. But as things have evolved, you know, it's become the, the key issue, at least in my eyes. And I think that I can add a great deal in terms of what I know uh, from a medical standpoint and what I experience at the hospital. I also think that in terms of coming together and uh, building a team and improving a bad situation, I have experience with that as well. When I came here four years ago, our cardiac surgery program was a one-star program. 
And recently, I think people have heard that it's a three-star program, the highest that you can achieve from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. And we did that by putting the correct people in place and the correct policies and procedures in place. And over time, things got better. We didn't just pat ourselves on the back when we did things right. We were very critical of ourselves when we got things wrong. And that's what you have to be. You have to be critical of yourself when you get things wrong. That's how you get better. Okay. Other Sharon, than that, I want yeah. people to know yeah, that. Yes, one other thing, yes. Right ahead, I, you know that I'm all about service. Right. I'm just not involved in the things that my children are involved in or their schools. I'm involved in other schools too. I'm involved when it doesn't benefit me. And that's the true essence of, essence of service when you're involved because it doesn't benefit you. Okay. Thanks. I didn't mean to walk on you. There's this virtual thing gets in the way sometimes. Sherry, the final statement as to why you should be elected to the Board of Education, whatever you wish to say. Well, I mean, I think. Um, you look at where I've been over the last 30 years. I've been working, I worked for a Fortune 300 um, logistics company where I set up supply chain systems for many manufacturers across the US, Canada, and Mexico. And during that process, I learned how to work with people that don't want to work with you. Um, I learned how to negotiate. I learned how to sit back and listen. I learned how to facilitate the process of getting good teamwork. And I think that's going to be one of the keys as this board moves forward is learning how to work together for a common goal. And along with that, I mean, the last eight years I've been home, but I've been active in schools. I've been active in my church. I've been active in a lot of other things um, besides the kids. But I think having those two dynamics gives me a better understanding of both the business aspect of the school board and also the emotional aspect that parents come to the board with and being able to mingle those two and get a better and stronger group to help get the schools to where they need to be. The, the school system has a lot of good things going for it. The thing is, is we have to bring the ones that are struggling up to the level that the higher schools are. And that, that's a hard process. I mean, you've got a lot of economics to go along with it. You've got a lot of diversity that goes along with it. But if you are treating people the same and fairly and being honest and sitting there and, and supporting these kids, it will happen. But it's not going to happen overnight. And we've got to get in there and really start working on it. I want to thank you both for doing this. Sherry Franks and Dr. Kamika Noel are seeking Board of Education District 5, Position 1. It has been represented by Jim Campbell, who is not seeking re-election this year. Thank you both for doing this. Thank you. I appreciate Thank the time you. very much. Continued best to both of you. And appreciate you putting yourselves out there and, and wanting to work with this community. It's a, it's a real special place. Our thanks to the Chamber for coordinating this. Steve Bowers with you, and this is E-Plus TV6. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Commissioner, very much. Thank you. Thank you.